Okay, so welcome to the first Stealth video tutorial. Uh, the goal of this video is to give a brief introduction to Stealth and go over the essential configuration options as well as um, like a little foray into the, the scripting mechanics or philosophy of Stealth. Uh, I'm assuming little to prior, uh, little to no prior knowledge of Stealth and we'll probably get a little bit granular uh, with some information so forgive if I seem to ramble a bit but my goal is to be as thorough as possible. Um, so to start, we're going to start from the ground up. Uh, we're going to just download the zip file, um, open it up, uh, go through the configuration and all that. So let's create a folder on the desktop. We'll call it Stealth uh, Tutorial. Beautiful. And let's get the, uh, unzip the files um, over into that folder and take a look at what we have here. So here's the three main files that come with our distributions right now. The first is the Stealth application itself. Uh, the second is the script.dll file. That's the um, unmanaged DLL for uh, for scripting for scripters, so they can write um, scripts in any language that they want that can interface to an unmanaged DLL. So C, C++, Python, Delphi. It's written in Delphi. Uh, we have wrappers currently for Python and Delphi. Um, we also have a whole separate DLL for um, .NET. Uh, it's a managed .NET DLL that I wrote um, that I'll be releasing here shortly. Uh, so you can write in Visual Basic, C Sharp, F Sharp, whatever it is that you want. Okay, so that's for script writers. Um, and the client DLL, which is kind of like a helper application for the uh, UO game client. Um, it has like Razor uh, type functionality, UO Sys type functionality with macros, hotkeys, um, automatically opening, uh, like corpse opening uh, for, for creatures that you kill, uh, and stuff like that. So let's get into the, uh, the application and, uh, and dive right in here. So here's the main window for stealth. A um, couple of notes here. Um, this is all self-explanatory statistics um, for your character and all that. Um, on the left-hand side, I do want to make a point to explain what this is now. Um, Stealth has the ability to connect multiple profiles at the same time, multiple accounts at the same time within the single instance of Stealth. So let's just say I have five accounts that I want to connect to at the same time. I would configure those profiles as we're about to, as about to, as I'm about to show you, and I would um, load them all up here. So we have five different profiles that we can connect to, and we'd select them there and add them. And now I can connect to each one individually and I can run scripts on each one individually. So on, th on this account, I wanted a, a bod filler. I would load up the bod filler script that I've written, press play, boom, off it goes. I can load a mining script here, load up the mining script, press play, off it goes. Um, so there's no need for multiple UO installations, multiple UO clients running at the same time. Within one single instance of Stealth, I can run all my clients, all, I mean all my accounts at the same time, all my scripts at the same time, no issues. So it's really, really cool. Uh, very, very low resource requirements as well. You know, loading, running a bunch of UO clients, especially if you're running enhanced clients with Pinko's UI, um, it's a resource hog. And uh, if you're just doing some simple stuff, some simple scripting, um, you shouldn't need to, you know, to, to dedicate gigabytes of memory to, to accomplish that, okay? But anyway, that's a little cool feature that I wanted to point out. So first things first, let's go into the stealth configuration itself settings and you'll see a couple of options that are turned on here by default uh, this the current release candidate is release candidate 4 that we da downloaded um, but um, uh, so with that um, with with the current versions there are a couple of features turned on that we don't really want right now so let's turn off packet logging and de and the debug log this is just if you're working with us and we require a packet log um, an important note though that if you do send your packet log to anybody um, where you're trying to connect to a server, it will include your username and password. So make sure you don't just send that send that out any uh, to just to any old person, um, or make sure you edit it out before you send it. Um, the stealth staff, including myself, we don't care about your account info. We're not out. There's nothing that you have that we want, so you don't have to really worry about us. But again, you shouldn't be um, you know giving out your account information ever to any to anybody, including us. Um, so let's turn those off. The rest of the stuff here um, is self-explanatory. Um, I really don't. We really don't need to go into it um, too much. Um, and over here, make sure log packets is turned off. 
and more importantly the server mode we want to make sure we're in full mode I'm not going to explain why that's for developers script developers and, and whatnot um, that I'll get into uh, in future tutorials when we're talking about uh, writing scripts and packet filter we don't care about because we're not logging packets right so let's hit OK and save that um, as you can see in the directory now stealth has generated a configuration file there'll be a few more configuration files and data files here that stealth uses um, nothing to be concerned about okay so let's configure our first profile. Now, you can have a profile for each account that you have. You can have a profile for each character that you have. That's up to you. Um, for this tutorial, I'm going to make one profile for one account. Okay? We're going to type in my login information here, uh, username and password. Um, the way that Visitor has uh, set this up, every configuration is a profile, and you have to add your configuration uh, before you can save it. Here's the little add button. So you can see main account populated here and actually populated up there as well. Um, and now we have to configure a shard to go on. Oh, before I do that, um, this, this little option down here, how to select a shard and character index. What that means is it, how you want Stealth to handle uh, connecting to the actual account that you're setting up here. Um, this, uh, the default option is ask for me. Ask which ask for me means ask which uh, server you want to connect to uh, within the shard. Meaning, like if you connect to OSI, if you want Chesapeake, Atlantic, Great uh, the Great Lakes, Europa, whatever. And um, so ask me that every time, and then ask what character inside that shard you want every time. If you have this selected, it's remember my choice. So if once I select the shard, once I select the character, it'll remember, and then every time I connect there, there on, it will just connect me directly into the, into that character automatically. And the, or you can have it specifically always select the first shard on the list and the first character. Okay. For this demo, we're gonna have ask me always. I don't want you to remember my choice, and I have a little bit of OCD, so I hit save a bunch of times. Okay. And now we have to select a shard. Now shard in this context means whether you're connecting to OSI, whether you're connecting to a free shard like Run UO or uh, UO Forever or Abyss or whatever you use, okay? Um, we're going to name this OSI. We're going to use OSI's login server, which is login.ultimaonline.com, and the port they use is 7776. Uh, Tooltip delay, I don't want to really explain that right now. It's kind of beyond the scope. Just make sure this value is 100 or over. Let's make it 200 to be safe. And the client version, uh, which uh, the, the latest client is 7.0.32.11. Now, just FYI, another cool feature of Stealth is that it can emulate any client version. So let's just say that you're one of those people that hates patching. Or as you know, if, if you use EGUO and a new patch comes out and you load up uh, Ultima Online, it patches and updates, Ulti uh, you, EGUO won't work because it doesn't recognize that client version. Well, if you're running Stealth, and you don't want to patch your client, but that old client won't log in, guess what? All you have to do is change it here. And even if you're using, say, 7.0.31 as the version of your client IDXE, of, of your game client that you run, then um, it'll still work. It'll Stealth will log in as a, as a 7.0.32.11 uh, client, and the, the graphical client that you use, the Ultima Online game itself, will know no different. Pretty cool, right? So, and then you can use your, your old version of the client, you can use the old version of EZUO, and you'll be able to run all your scripts while everybody else is stuck waiting for Chef to update it. All right, OSI is an encrypted client, so we have to click that. If you use an unencrypted, uh, if you use an unencrypted client, oh, I'm getting a message here from my girlfriend. Um, <laughs> uh, if you use an unencrypted client for a free shard, then um, obviously you won't select that. Now, <coughs> Oh my gosh. Let me <laughs> get off of there. Okay, so the next is the path to your mole or UOP. That's going to be your Ultima Online installation directory. So for me, it's, it's ultima, C colon backslash Ultima Online Classic. Um, if you have a generic installation, it'll probably be something more like Program Files, x86, EA Games, Ultima Online classic, or if you use the enhanced client, it'll be the, the folder uh, for the enhanced client. You can use this to search for it, search around your computer for it, okay? And then we have to configure one more time. So we have to add this configuration. Don't forget, add. Save a bunch of times because we have OCD, remember? 
And now we have to configure one more thing, the actual graphic client that you want to use. So we're going to name this 2D Classic Client because that's what I use. And let's go ahead and search for the client.exe. It'll be in my installation folder. And here it is, the actual application client, uh, the client application that we'll use. Okay. So as you see, it automatically populated here. And a couple of notable options here. Um, this is like a raise is the razor like option to change the gameplay resolution window. So as you know, the the default uh, 2D classic client gameplay window is really really small, especially for modern monitors and resolutions. So if you want to increase that, no problem. Just hit change resolution too, and you can make it whatever you want. Just a little note, side note, that if you make it too large. Um, there is a limitation in the old client and the amount of data, like distance uh, data that you get from the server. So if you make this like 1920 by 1200, actually you can't, stealth only limits you to 1600 by 1280 or something. But um, if you make it that big, you'll have a bunch of black crop artifacts all, artifacts all around your draw, all, all around your gameplay window. So um, the, really the, the highest you should ever go is like, maybe like, 1200 by 1000. I think that's even too big. So you can play around with that. And the other notable um, important configuration option is use steel config instead of login config. And what that means is um, Ultima Online uses a file, I'll show it to you right here, called login.config. And that holds um, configuration options for the actual game um, with IP addresses and ports to how to, how to connect to the, to the EA servers. Okay? Um, and if you don't select this option here, Stealth will overwrite that file. So if you try to if you try to actually play the game with the actual UO client.exe, um, it won't be able to connect because Stealth's options will be in this file instead of steel.config. Okay, so let's hit Add here, and we'll hit Save a bunch of times, and we'll hit Close it. So you'll and you'll see that it populated here. We have the client configured. This again, that's the graphic client that you want to use. Okay. Um, hit save a couple of more times. OSI is set up. Our shard is set up. We're ready to go. Hit close. Let's select the shard here that we just configured. Again, OSI. Hit save a bunch of times. Close that up. And now let's connect and see what happens. Okay, we have a list of shards here. I use Atlantic. I like Atlantic, so we'll do there. And then we have our little demo guy, Stealthy. Okay, that's the name of our character, a little elf mage thing guy. All right. And now we're connected. And you're probably asking, okay, well, if, especially if you're a novice, you're, you might be asking, well, where's the game? How are we connected? That makes no sense to me. Remember, stealth is the client. It is the game. We are connected already. We're in the game. It's just that you can't see it because we don't have the graphic client set up. However, if you had a script here, let's just say, like, like I said, the bod filler script, and we loaded up that bod filler and hit play, and you were in the right location with all the data, with all your variables set up and everything, you could just hit play, and it'll go f start filling bods, no problem. And then you could add another uh, profile here and connect to that, and then load up the, the game client and actually play while your one account is scripting, your other account you can just play. So it's pretty cool. But for this demo, we, Let's see, uh, let's see how starting the client works. And boom, we're in the game. We're connected. No problem. Now, you might say, okay, well, what if I want to, what if I log out here and what if I exit the client? Remember, that client is just a graphic client. That it, we're just using that to show the game, to show the graphic uh, interface to the game. But we're still connected. And if we just started up again, you'll see here, we didn't have to connect. We're already connected. We're here. Pretty cool, right? So now let's show a couple of other things that Stealth um, has built in. So here's that client DLL, that, ha that helper application that I was showing you before. Um, this file right here that I said was that helper application. That's this. And I'm not going to go into all this, but you can see the corpse is auto-open, self-corpse tracker. It has a whole bunch of options. You can go in, a little skill tree in there as well. Um, scripts, hotkeys, and stuff like that. So you can play around with that. I'm not going to go into all, those all the options for client D DLL for this tutorial. Um, and we'll go over these, these uh, other tabs in this window. So the skill tree is the same skill tree that you just saw up there. You can sort by current. You can see all your current. Real is, is the actual skill uh, value, less any jewelry or enhancement items that you have on. And change is how much you've gained since we've logged in. Pretty self-explanatory. World is for scripters. Um, you can see every item that's near you. Um, you can limit that radius if you wish as well. Um, and uh, all, the, all this is pretty self-explanatory for scripters. Just know that you can find items, their IDs, their types, their colors, their quantity, 
their coordinates and then their uh, their location and their tooltip as well. Okay, and then the journal, which is really cool. This journal is not limited like the in-game journal. So as most of you probably know, that once this reaches max length, it starts overwriting the beginning. You can't go all the way back to since you logged in. It, it has a maximum length. Whereas Stealth will keep all that you see for the entire duration that you have Stealth loaded. Okay, So you have infinite history here, which is really cool. You also have a built-in map, which is pretty awesome as well. You can zoom in three, four, five times. Um, all the little yellow crosses here, little X's that you see, are NPCs. Um, uh, blue blue crosses will be uh, game uh, you know game users or 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 other NP or specific types of NPCs as well. And then the little red dot is you. You can also get an external version of this, put it on another monitor or whatever you know. And uh, and there's your map. You can go and you can scroll around and take a look, like, zoom way out, see the whole world the whole UO map, and that's all built in. Pretty cool stuff. All right, now the only other thing I wanted to show is a quick demo of the scripting capability of Stealth. So Script has an editor built in, and it's all Pascal, remember. Um, and it has um, you know basic type IntelliSense and, uh, type thing, so if you want to use um, a specific function, let's say move XY, and we, we load up that function, it'll show you the X dis the, all the parameters that you need for that function x distance, y distance, optimization, accuracy. This is all, you know, that's for script writers and you can look up our API and, and to discover what all that is. So you can load a, write a script here, save it, compile it, and then play it. Or more importantly, what, what I really wanted to demo is the uh, scripting functionality as far as external languages go. Now I wrote a, uh, an IDOC finder in C Sharp that uses our .NET DLL that again I'll be releasing um, you know shortly in the next couple of days. Now I load up it. It's an application that I compiled. It's a literal application. It's not just like a, an easy UO script .text like which is an interpreted scripting language. No, this is an application that is interfacing to Stealth via the DLL that I wrote. Um, and when I hit play here, you'll see that the application runs just like a regular application, but it's interfaced to Stealth right now. So if I run up here to some player houses, it'll start scanning them. See houses scanned one. Um, you go here, you see that little scanned text. That means it's scanned the sign way, sign way up there. It scanned that sign as well. All it's doing is scanning and checking for iDocs. Now, I wish I had a mount on this guy so I can show you how fast it is. But as you know, um, with legacy scripting and easy UO, uh, really awesome scripters like Trailmix and CEO and C2, these guys wrote OCRs that actually have to scan the letters of the sign. It's real slow and it'll tell you to stop and say, um, you know, please stop while I scan this and then you can keep going after it's done scanning. Well, everything on, in Stealth is done at the packet level. So there is no waiting for anything. You just run, run around and get all the information that you want. So this is just to show you that um, Stealth is extremely powerful and extremely fast um, and flexible and dynamic. and. Uh, Right now you can see that little green bar going. What that's doing is actually scanning every item that comes on the screen as it comes on. Every item as it's downloaded is being scanned to see if it's a sign. And if it's a sign, it's being scanned to see if it's if it's decaying for an IDOC. Okay, that's just the way I designed it. There's other ways to do it, but um, that was just a test script for the .NET DLL. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed our demo. Um, that's pretty much it for this demo. So we've, we've learned how to configure a profile, how to connect. Um, how Stealth interfaces with the graphic client, um, and kind of how how scripts work, and how how we load them up and play them, and and what they look like um, uh, for now. So, uh, if you have any questions, please hop on stealth.od.ua or scriptuo and 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 get on there and ask some questions. And um, either myself, I'm Orich, or uh, or Chrome, or Visitor, or Boyden, or there's a whole big team uh, behind Stealth here. So we're we're always willing to help. All right, um, thanks a lot, and uh, happy scripting.